Prime Minister, uh, how do you think the case is going today? And um, uh, do you have a, a good outlook for the afternoon session? You know, uh, it went according to what we had hoped for, you know, and that was, uh, we were hoping that our evidence would get admitted into the state court. Uh, and of course the uh, report and uh, both of them were admitted so that definitely puts us in, into an advantage right now that we're able to you know continue this case you know based upon what we submitted and uh, I think that's that's really huge you know um, all along that was one of our uh, concerns you know whether or not the courts would accept it and uh, so far I mean I, one thing about us Kanakas yeah we're trying not to say something that has not occurred, so I feel, I, I feel good about what, what's taking place right now. Certainly, you know, when you, do, when, when you provide expert testimony, what it does, it, it actually adds more weight to your position, you know, and uh, that was really the key to what we were trying to accomplish in our court case. Uh, I mean, it, it wouldn't be as, uh, I would just say, persuasive if I was the only one testifying that, oh yes, this nation exists, okay? And that was the reason why we made that decision long ago, to bring in an expert witness, praying that that, and that person would be accepted by the courts, and then of course, he would now testify to why and how we achieved our sovereign nation status. And obviously, uh, if you've been aware of how uh, court cases are conducted, yeah, you'll really, when you see some very uh, high profile case, what you have is expert witnesses versus expert witnesses. So I I'm really glad that we were able to get our expert witness uh, accepted into this court case. No, like I said, I think Mr. Gates made that real clear in the court case right now. That legislation has already been passed. And you have U.S. federal government admitting and confessing to that illegal act of overthrow. Now, when you look at international law, that's serious stuff. Okay? So they've provided this, this law to us that we needed to act upon it. Our people needed to. Okay? They're not going to come and give you back your nation. You got to know how to form it. You got to know how to execute one. All right. Now the state has done the same thing by passing statutes. They just they have passed legislation. Act 359 is real clear that we have a right as a people to form our own sovereign nation of our choosing. So with that was that is what we've done. And then of course there's the transfer statute that states that the island of Kaolave, yeah, shall be returned to a sovereign Hawaiian entity. So it is important in our position to clarify what is a sovereign nation versus what is an entity, just an entity. And I think we, I'm praying that that has been achieved through our international lawyers' uh, testimony. Oh, I tell you what, you know, that I think he made it real clear that legislation has already been passed. He also made it clear that you know we're not we're not here to ask the state whether or not we were a nation or not. I, I think that has to be clarified. We know we're a nation, okay? And by executing the reclamation of Kaolave, yeah, it actually fulfills, like I said, a vital component under international law that you have to possess territory in order to be a nation, okay? So by us executing that, we like I said, we manifested the completion of what was required under international law. So, again, you know, legislation has already been passed. Yeah, uh, I guess you, they didn't mention, and uh, the uh, prosecutors didn't mention uh, Act 359. Okay, that was that was legislation passed in 1993 by the state legislature. And if you know what Act 359 says, that the Hawaiian people has the right to govern themselves as a sovereign nation of their own choosing. This is another statute that we're asking the court. Listen, how is it possible for us yeah, to avoid this 
suppression, this continual hindrance that we're faced with when in fact your laws have already provided this avenue for a sovereign nation to be formed by our Hawaiian people. I stand here to, st to state to everybody, I believe that I am a Hawaiian and those that are part of our kingdom, we make up the people. Okay? Now, whether or not you're going to run one election or you're going to try to get the consensus of all the Kanakas or all the Hawaiian people, that, has, that is definitely a task in itself. What we realized was by reinstating the former nation's right to exist, we also acquired those rights that we reserved to it. And what was reserved to it? The right of political power political authority, the right to reclaim what lands belong to its government, its former government. And this is where we're headed for. You know, that was the reason why we executed what we did. Is our reinstated Hawaiian Kingdom nation, yeah, uh, only for Kanakas? No, it's not. Our former nation had a naturalization process of which we also have one, okay, in our reinstated process, okay. Uh, as far as removing potential taxpayers out of our nation, <coughs> I don't think it would be to our advantage, you know. I think that's an issue that will be brought up, you know, uh, that will be discussed, you know, it's already being discussed in our conventions, but it's like I said, it's like taking a step before you able to resolve any of those problems or those issues. So we've been able to handle those things. Uh, basically, what I say to people is, hey, if you haven't experienced our aloha yet, then you know what? You should start to look into how we've been able to handle being oppressed, yeah, being occupied, illegally occupied for 115 years. I think we've, we've taken it quite well. Certainly. You know, um, we believe yeah, that... What's happening to us today is that this existing governments yeah, have been oppressing, suppressing, and hindering our right as a nation to exercise sovereign powers. And every time we take Kaolavi, for instance, okay, and we are, we exercise in our sovereign powers, and they're going to come and try to exercise their statutes upon us. I think what's going to happen from this point on is we're going to start to demonstrate and protest that continual denial and oppression of our right to sovereign powers in Hawaii. In fact, uh, we're actually planning to begin a protest and demonstration tomorrow down at, uh, in Lahaina at the Banyan Tree so that we can get the general public to understand that this is our right. Okay, this is, this is not something that the United States gave to us. It is our right as a people to reclaim our nation. And in the process, why are we continually harassed, arrested, and oppressed? I don't understand that. But I think it's a matter of understanding how transition of government powers work. They, have, they probably are going to have difficult time in releasing these powers. So we needed to educate them, and that's why we took all this time. Do I have contingencies for the decisions either way? Yeah, definitely. You know, we, we, we've sat down and we've made sure what we walked through, what were some of the uh, outcomes, yeah? What if this happens, what if this happens? So I think we're pretty well prepared. So, like I said, I'm, we're praying that, that the courts do the right thing, you know? So we're going to find out. All right? I want to thank you guys for coming. Mahalo.